Hey everybody, this is your old friend Trevor. So I was just actually like thinking about things and looking through all my models back here in my own collection and all that, and I came across my 1964 Chevy Impala. Now this model kit of course you can build stock or custom, so I was thinking about like building it custom and I already sort of started with it. And I know I've got the uh, 57 T-Bird that I'm working on and the uh, Coca-Cola van and I was trying to get the 31 Packard or sorry the 1930 Packard together and a bunch of things and this is just another project I've been working on. But this one I uh, put that front end on here. This is the custom one. I was looking up this car online and I actually see that every time somebody customizes one of these Impalas there's hardly anybody that uses that front end on there and this front end was actually designed by George Barris and then there's also that rolled pan wherever it is um, I glued it on but it popped off <laughs> see if I can just find it like I've already painted the Chevy engine red and uh, I know I'm doing that group build right now my own Monster Hobbies group build where we're working on custom cars and of course that's that 57 T-Bird but you know I kind of want to just build things <laughs> I've been doing a lot of unboxing videos as you know and we got new items in for the store as well so I've been making videos on hey here's the new model cars and trucks but I feel like doing something the weather is coming up nice you know so and like I got the T-Bird and all that on the go as well but one thing that I thought was, uh, like there's that rolled pan rear end, was uh, I saw one of these guys, <clears throat> and what they did is they sanded off the chrome in the door handles, which are still on this kit here. So I was thinking of doing that too, and they dug out the Impala logo and sanded that smooth. That's a little bit of a thing in there to do that with. A little bit of a trick, I'm trying to say. So anyway, here's the... Uh, that custom front grill off the parts tree and like oh I, I think it's upside down here so that'll just fit in there nice like that and it's got that rolled pan and then there's this little again I got to turn upside down but the little grill that goes up under in the rolled pan uh, now this kit you can build with the big uh, 409 with the blower sticking out through the hood, but I don't really want the blower through the hood. I want to give this thing the nice 1964 style George Barris look. And one thing that they did have is you could cut out that uh, little square in there on the original kit, and there was like a, a scoop like on the Pontiacs. But I'm, I don't have that scoop, it's not in production anymore. Also on the original of this kit, it had the working headlights. And I noticed something about that. If you actually look at the back end of the bumper, like this has got molded headlights in now, but it's sunken in just a little bit. If you notice that it's recessed. And I think if you had the right drill in here, you could drill right through, drill out the molded on headlamps. And uh, in your clear parts, if you have any, if you have any of these headlights in your clear parts, you could actually put them in from behind and then have the lighted effect again if you wanted to do it. But I don't know. And then there's some cool things here too, like the disc brake that's in there. You can prop this car up with the disc brake on it. So again, I think I'm just going to do a video of this. So um, yeah, it should be cool. All right, so here we got the body. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my Good old number 16 hobby blade and try not to stick it in my thumb. <laughs> but let's just get rid of the door handle because that's like the first thing that usually goes. Hang on, there's a ridge in here. Is that supposed to be in there? No, I guess not. Okay. <clears throat> let's cut the door handle off. I've built a lot of these Impalas over the years, but I've never even used that custom front end except for on this kit. So let's see. Huh. Seems like my blade might be a little dull. Okay. There we go. Now I'm officially committed. Committed to shaving the door handles and getting rid of that chrome trim. 
100%. So here we go, Peter. This one's for you. The point of no return. Never to come back <clears throat> to that door handle. <laughs> anyway. I think what Peter would do here is actually etch the door out and uh, build opening door jams, but I don't know. I kind of want to go simple. You know, I, I really don't get to build model cars much, so... Because when I had the hobby shop, I was building Warhammer armies. And of course, playing the game a lot, so needed the big standing army to defend the uh, monster hobbies there. <laughs> so I kind of got off of model cars, but I used to build a lot all the time. So here's our sanding block. And unfortunately, this is the 180 grit sandpaper, but <clears throat> pardon me, I will take the risk. Now, the one I saw online, it's actually interesting. If you look up, uh, if you go online and do a Google search for 1964 AMT Impala and you type in instructions, there's that nice website on Fotkey where the guy has scanned in all the instructions and everything. And he's built a model of this very car with that nose on it and smoothed out with the chrome trim removed. And it looks really nice. So I want to try to make my version of it. Okay, so we're going to cross sand, of course. And uh, that means going at a 45 degree angle this way. And then we're going to come back this way just to remove that chrome trim and get this panel all nice and smooth up top. So here's something interesting here. When I was taking my sanding block and sanding down this panel to get rid of this uh, piece of trim on here, the molding, it actually removed the engraved gas filler door out of here. So now the car is completely smooth all the way across and there's not even the gas filler door. So this could almost be like the, in the later 70s when they had it hidden somewhere, you know what I mean? Kind of cool, it's sort of an unexpected thing. I'm not sure if I'll keep the Impala in there or not. It would be interesting just to identify the car, but we'll see how it all goes. You're watching the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage with your host, Trevor Slescu, owner of Monster Hobbies Online. That's me! All right, so here we have a mock-up. I used a little green tape under here to hold the hood in, just so you could see what's going on. So I did remove the SS Impala logo out of the side, and I sanded all this down, so you got a nice smooth line in here. Got rid of the little V emblem. I got rid of the l big Chevy latch on the back and the little door lock or trunk lock. I, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of the Chevrolet out of here or just keep it in place. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cold over the last four days. There's a bit of a lump in here that I noticed. That's a mold, sort of a distortion. But one thing when I was cross sanding, there is another little sink mark on the fender on the other side, and that actually got sanded out. And another thing I need to do is the bottom doesn't totally fit together quite right, as you can see with this gap. So I need to take some sh little strips of styrene, glue them inside here, just so that there's a bit of a backing. And then I can put my filler in and it won't just crack through as I'm going. And uh, there on this side too, we need some more filler because this is a little shorter than the other side. So I'd have to cross sand here and loop it. But overall, I mean, this is starting to look quite a bit good. You can see the direction it's heading into. And again, those smooth sides actually really make it nice. So they, there will be a little chrome trim up around on the windows and that. I've left the wipers in because, I mean, <laughs> you need this car in the rain. And yeah, again with the Chevrolet, I left the rings around here as well, just so they're all nice and even. Or uh, so the detail wasn't lost, I'm trying to say. Yeah, getting that Chevy out of there it would look nice because then when you got the rear end on there, it, it has a nice ring around it without being interrupted by the Chevy. But again, trying to sand in there. I've got a small half round file, but it gets a little touch and go, if you know what I mean. Overall, though, I mean, what do you think? It's not bad. Might leave that dent in there. I don't know. It's, there's a bit of a molding around the, the wheels, so trying to cross sand I might knock that off on that edge I don't really want to do that 
Or am I just imagining that? Is there a ridge? No, there's a definite ridge. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, there it is, looking quite sleek. So let me know in the comments down below, and I'm going to, you know, <clears throat> in between here, I'm going to take some fine sandpaper and try to get these deep scratches out of here. I know I shouldn't use that uh, 180 sand sandpaper. It's too rough. should really use 220 as the, uh, the roughest you're going to use, but... You know, on that MDF, this thing's like an obliterator, so it just gets rid of that mold, mold lines and uh, the side trim. It just like completely chews it off of there, so that's why I use this. But overall, you know, let me know what you think. Now here I have the AMT 64 Chevy, and this is what it looks like after I've scraped down all the door handles and corrected out this angle in here. As you can see, it is quite nice and long looking. It almost reminds me of Oldsmobile, maybe like a 63 or 4 Olds or something, once uh, all that trim and molding is gone. I also did take it out of the sides as well, so you can see it's nice and clean. There was the SS logo in there and the little uh, Chevy V8 Impala thing. Just to wrap up, I did leave the Chevy script in there, but I did clean this up a bit just to make this all nice and flat. So this is with the Krager Mag wheels in the low rider position, although the car does still seem to sit up kind of high. There's the front grille, just the top portion. One thing I noticed about this, it almost looks like a 1970 Plymouth GTX in the front, just with the way this dips down and everything. So I wonder if Plymouth actually got the idea for this from this model or if it was just a styling evolution thing and nobody really knew any better. Now I did not put the filler pieces up in here yet, but that'll be for some time later. Now one thing I did notice is <clears throat> if I just take the undercarriage off. Now I'm having trouble with these wheels because the metal axle isn't long enough it should really go so long that it hits this cap inside almost, if you know what I mean. But these things are just so short and stubby. Actually, it should get another 16 gauge wire. It should be cut about that long, so when these things slide, the wire goes, you know, like I said, like way up inside there. But uh, one thing I noticed about this, if you take a look at this plastic that's outside here, this is in a, like a, not a triangle shape, but um, uh, with the four sides, the parallelogram or whatever, and it's it's tapered in at the top. Now, one thing that I noticed is with the wheels in the lower position, the stock position, just get that in there. Come on, there. You'll notice that uh, this chrome overhang goes right inside there. Just like it should and so that these wheels would be nice and flush with this edge you know as best you can so when this gets popped back into the body okay on. Huh. there we go when it gets popped back in the body these should free wheel nicely, but the problem is that's the stock height. So if I want to lower this, it would only be lowered in the front, which gives the car a rake, which I mean, there's no problem with that if you want it raked in the front, but if you want it to be fully flat, um, you know, even, the body line to be even and lowered, then you need to take this and move it down to that bottom position, right? like so. But there's a problem now. If you can see this, this now leaves a gap in between here and here because of that uh, upside down diamond shape. And that also pulls this axle so far in that the wheel wouldn't be able to hook up to it on the other side. So it needs to actually happen is, oops, need to find a drill bit that matches the base of this, maybe a little bit bigger. And then put it so it lines up here, if you know what I mean, and just hand twist it until this little area just up in here, this part, 
becomes big enough to allow this wheel to sink in because as soon as you go down now it wants to pull away and sit out there but that's not right not right at all so anyway i will have to address that in the future but for now this is as good as it's going to get well i hope you enjoyed that video and good luck on your version of the group build can't wait to see what you guys have all been working on and what you can show me so if you want to get some amazing model kits don't forget to check out the link down here and like and subscribe over here and there's a great video for you to check out as well and until next time everybody happy model building